What's going on guys? I'm back with my partner James and today I'm going to be using another weapon in provision. Now, I don't have an actual scarf, but it is, this is supposed to represent a scarf and the techniques that we're, we're taking from this are from what's called a sarong, uh, which is generally worn across uh, a person's body. But uh, we're going to adapt it to Western culture a little bit and we're going to use it as a scarf, whether it's an infinite scarf or infinity scarf where it loops around um, or it's just a regular scarf. So I'm just going to use my sash to, to kind of represent what that was supposed to be. And essentially, you can use it in, in two different ways. There's one where you can just wrap it around your hand and use it like a projectile. Not projectile, sorry. Using it as a weapon for angle one, angle two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. And although this is not a stick or a knife, the fabric hitting still hurts. So if you, you, know, you cross it up across someone's face, you hit them in, in you know, a sensitive area, it's still going to bother them. It's still going to work in its own way. The way that I'm going to show you today is... A very common grip that they would use the sarong in, and I'm just going to wrap it around my hands. And essentially what I'm looking for is something that can be firm, but also flexible. And I'm going to do a lot of wrapping around my target in certain positions. So I generally like to use about just a little over my shoulder width, or shoulder length in this case. And this is the grip that I'm going to use here. So there's a couple of situations and scenarios we're going to work with. The first one is the very simple, and we're going to work off the cross. I'm going to make sure this is nice and firm and I'm going to use it almost like a stick or like a shield almost and when the punch comes I'm going to pass it out to the side. Okay, So I need this to be strong enough to be able to control and redirect the weight of James's arm. Now this is whether this is committed or not I gotta have enough power to parry it and where it goes I don't really care as long as I can attack the arm after. So it's going to be Parry to the side and I'm going to turn and I'm going to attack right on top of the elbow going towards the tricep. And when I do so, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to drop his base down just enough where I can get towards his head. Okay. When I get to this position, now right now this is pretty easy for me, but if James was a little taller or his head was a little larger, I'm going to bring the scarf across the side of his neck. My right hand is going to go up. Now, if this is hard for me to do, I take my left hand and I pass his head down underneath my right armpit. Okay, I'm bringing this around here and I'm going to turn my body. My right hand is going to push. My left hand is going to pull and there's going to be a choke right there. Okay, so what's happening right now is I'm parrying, I'm breaking the base, I'm capturing repositioning, and submitting here. Okay, so there's a couple ways we could do the submission. I'm going to show you off the entry a couple of variations that we can do. So the first one is the one you saw. We come over here. We choke normally. I can also take my left leg, break his base by stepping on the back side of his knee. And as I do that, instead of letting him fall, I'm going to maintain this tension, but move it backwards. And that's going to be the choke there. Okay. Another one that I can do is I'll block, hit, bring it around. This time, instead of crossing, my left will stay on his right shoulder. My right will stay on his left shoulder. I'm going to pull him back, step behind him, use my back as sort of a table, pull, and the choke's there. Okay, the final one, there'll be a takedown here. So I'm going one, two, tighten this up here. My right hand's gonna make a full 360 around. So the choke is here. As I do that, I'm gonna step my right foot in. So technically the choke is here, but I can use this momentum to bring him down with the choke. Okay, so. A lot of the times when you do this choke to your partner, it's a very sensitive choke. It happens very, very quickly. Um, you know, unless you do a lot of uh, grappling when you'd have submissions off of a lapel, like in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, I really highly suggest that when you're practicing with your partner, uh, a clothing choke feels a lot different than, you know, with your arms or your legs. So take your time and be very, very sensitive to their taps because this does tighten very, very quickly and it can get really, really messy, um, especially if your partner's not expecting it. Okay, so uh, those are very simple ways without having to really play around with my grip too much, aside from the fact that I'm going to do that rotation 
to uh, set up the submission there. There are different ways we can submit. I can keep them on the ground, I can flow, so on and so forth. The last thing I'm gonna show you guys is how we kind of set up an arm bar. And again, I'm not gonna talk about application with, with proper speed and technique, whatever. I just wanna demonstrate and show you the possibility uh, of thinking around the box and using separate techniques with uh, more accessible and modern weapons, okay? So this time I'm gonna go on the inside and I'm gonna make sure that this is strong enough to maintain this position for a split second so that I can wrap around the arm, okay? So I use my step inside here, I pass it off. Now my right hand is gonna go over, my left hand is gonna go under. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tighten up at the wrist here. As I do that, I'm going to come in with my elbow, pull for the tension, but push with my left shoulder so that I can create an outside arm bar position like this. So that's a lot of pressure on the elbow there, and from here I can sweep his base, so on and so forth. Okay, so I'll show you that one more time. I start from the inside, right hands under, sorry, right hands over, right hands underneath. I pass it off, and what I'm trying to do is tighten this. So my left hand's gonna go up, my right hand's gonna go down. When I get to that position, place my elbow against their elbow, outside arm bar there. Okay, so I can work from here. At any time I can tighten, pull tighter, release. All those things are, are capable. Essentially what this sarong or this scarf in this case is doing is it's acting as a third hand. Right? So it's helping me entangle and capture without my hands actually doing some work. But if they need to, they can. Okay, so the final parts of that in sort of the application is when I, sorry, when I come inside here and I wrap around here, as long as I got the wrist, because sometimes I won't get this elbow, right? This is a very clean and perfect scenario. But if I have this nice and tight, I pull, I go over top here and I drag him down and that's gonna be the takedown. And he has to fall because this is so tight and locked into his wrist that he can't do anything about it. So even if I let go here, He's still stuck, right? He's really entangled in there, and it's just the way that it works. So it takes a lot of work to get out, and in a reality sense, I'm not going to do, I'm not gonna let him do that. So I have this kind of position where I can isolate the arm, and then start my ground flow, so on and so forth. So it's a really, really easy way to, again, capture without actually using your hands, and not actually using it to grab and stuff, but I can. So it's just, again, an augmentation or, or a support system to my empty hand using mechanics from the sarong or flexible weapons and applying it in a, a kind of a, a modern day weapon, so to say. So um, as of right now, hopefully it's not you know, scarf season anymore and I'm not advising anyone to wear scarves for the sake of choking people out, but it is an option, it is a way to adapt, it is a way to be uh, able to improvise on the spot if you don't have a sarong or you don't have tabak toyok or nunchucks on you. Uh, it's the same way you would with the marker, and the marker is representing the knife or, or the, the baton or the stick. So if you guys enjoy watching these videos that have kind of this modern approach to uh, applying Kali, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. FMA Concepts is launching our Blade Tactics tutorials very, very shortly, so make sure you guys stay tuned. Remember, membership is free on the website. So go ahead and sign up, check out what we have so far, engage in the forums, get to know one another. And until next time, catch you guys.